so you want to be an assassin in Elden Ring. In this video, the goal is to level up, get some loot, and defeat Margit the Fell Omen. As stated before, I'm not the best sec ring dark blood player, so this is not the optimal way of making this build. I just wanted to figure it out as it went along. Again, if you have any other builds or challenges you would like to see, and it doesn't necessarily need to be just for Elden Ring, leave a comment below. And as always, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy. Picking up where we left off, I headed back over to Kenny to inform him that we did the thing. This house is clean. And got the earth steel dagger. Then I went north from the Warmaster's shack and got invaded by hip hop from 1990. Stop. Time. After I told him he couldn't touch this, I headed southeast to take out the knight that drops the golden vow, Ash of War. and a scarab that drops a somber smithing stone. Next, it's time to head to the death-touched catacombs just north of where we met Alexander. I did not equip the sacred blade that we picked up last time, because again, only big brain moves on this channel. After getting the lever to open the boss area, it was time to take on another black knife assassin, starting to see a trend here, and get the assassin's crimson dagger, which will restore a portion of your HP upon landing a critical hit. I then made a trip to Summon Water Village, near the Temple of the Dog from the last video, to take on the Shinbone of Seattle for a death root and some spooky doot doot ashes, along with some runes. Continuing northeast, I took Arnie's advice to get your ass to Moss and made my way around the outside, round the outside, round the outside of the smoldering church to avoid the invader. Picked up a couple of cookbooks and then grabbed some extra runes from the graveyard southwest of the Rotview balcony. Back at Camelot, I big brain purchased the rune arc for later and made my way towards the Weeping Peninsula. Cleared the bridge. And met Arena. Following the road, I met up with a merchant, bought a stone sword key, a pot, and some arrows. Taking the spring up, I solved the dog puzzle and got the memory stone from inside of the rise. Back down at the merchant, I headed through the gap, grabbed the map piece and the golden seed, then took out the golem in front of Castle Morn and grabbed the Sight of Grace for later. I then headed down to the Morn Tunnel to get some extra stones, runes, and then cleared the boss. It was then time to get the Faith Knot Crystal Tier. This is located on the ridge near the Church of Pilgrimage, and from here I headed to the church, picked up the Sacred Tier inside, then headed south to the Tombsward Catacombs. Still not having the Sacred Blade equipped, I cleared the ruins, took out the boss to get some more runes, and another summon. Next, I headed up to the Minor Erd Tree to take on the non-airbending avatar. And after destroying his cabbages, I got the Opaline Bubble Tier and the Crimson Burst Crystal Tier. Back to the Church of Pilgrimage, I headed southwest to the Tombsward Ruins to get some lilies. And then continued to the Fourth Church of Murica to get another Sacred Tier and upgrade our flasks. Heading south from here, I found the isolated merchant's shack and purchased the lantern. Back to Castle Morn, I made my way through the turtles, pumpkins, and misbegotten's to find Arena's sad dad. I gave him the letter and then proceeded down the backside oh yeah, of the castle. Eventually, I found myself at the boss and defeated him to get the grafted blade greatsword, which we just need to progress the sad dad quest by talking to him again and going back to where we met Arena. I then made a quick trip to the Dragon Burnt Ruins and opened the chest inside. Ha <laughs> you fool! You fell victim to one of the classic blunders! Which took me back to Mars. <laughs> I picked up the poison armament from an invisible scarab and a rune arc. Then I made my way over to the Fort Gale north side of Grace to get the flame of the Red Mane's Ash of War from the invisible scarab. 
I then made my way around the outside, around the outside, around the outside of the fort to find a couple of ghost riders which were protecting Flame Grantley's strength. Making my way back to Camelot, I purchased a regular dagger and a finger seal from the husks, equipped the dagger with the Bloodhound Step, replaced Hooer Frost Stomp on our Great Knife with Golden Vow, and memorized Flame Grantley's strength. It was now time to buff up and face the average game reviewer's worst nightmare, Margaret. We'll watch the cinematic again. Tarnished. In search of the Elden Ring. Emboldened by the flame of ambition. <gasps> I just love that, like... <sighs> so over it. Oh, I didn't dodge for some reason. That's awesome. What's going on? Okay. Oh, I'm stuck. Delayed attacks. I hate them. Ugh, those doubles. And quadruples. Come on. There we go. First try! And that is the end of Chapter 2. If you liked what you've seen and you want to see more, feel free to use the like, share, subscribe, bell, all that good stuff. Or don't. You don't have to. If there are any other builds or challenges you would like to see, leave a comment below. And if you want to see me struggle live, twitch.tv slash codename soap. And as always, thanks for watching, hope you enjoy, and we'll see you guys later.